Right, so next we're going to be looking at protecting data using legislation and codes of practice. So first and foremost, I think the two main things we need to focus on here are Data Protection Act of 1998 and the Computer Misuse Act of 1990. However, these acts have been updated. So the most recent Data Protection Act is, as you can see here, is of 2020. Before that, it was 2018 when we all started getting emails about GDPR. So again, the most recent one is 2020. However, the books and the, uh, the question papers might still refer to Data Protection Act of 1998. And I believe the Computer Misuse Act, um, when was the most recent one? 2018 as well. There we go. So both of them have been updated. So the Data Protection Act of 2020 um, strengthened the rights of individuals to be informed about how their data or their personal data is kept and processed. So this simply means that companies and individuals like myself that hold people's personal data, we have to be very careful how we store it. We have to make sure that it's stored in a relatively secure manner. Now, nothing is 100% secure, but we have to make sure we put certain things in place to ensure that data is not easily accessible by anyone. For example, um, you're a teacher working in a school. You have access to the details of your students, right? There are also other teachers working in that school, other cleaners working in that school, for example. It wouldn't make sense for the cleaner or the lunch lady to have details personal details of students like names phone numbers parents names that wouldn't really make sense so as companies we have to make sure that data is held in a sensible way it is held relatively securely and only people who need access to it have access to it only people who need to get to that data should be able to even see it so the data protection act has implications both on both individuals and organizations so for an organization, so just think of an organization as simply a company, uh, an entity which tries to make money, okay? So there's always going to be an increased cost. A company, for example, when you store your data on your laptop or your memory stick, you just simply drag and drop the files on there, right? A company can never do that. A company has to have, in today's day and age, um, a password-protected database that logs everyone that looks at certain data. So the NHS, for example. Every doctor or nurse that logs into your NHS profile and checks your details, there's always going to be a record somewhere. So someone can always go back and check who looked at your data and you could then even ask why they looked at your data, okay? They're also now limited in the amount of data they can store. So before, companies used to just simply collect every single thing they can about you. But what is the purpose? So let's just say I am trying to get a Virgin contract, either broadband, TV, phone, whatever the case is, right? They need to know maybe uh, where I live. That's quite obvious. My name, my date of birth, stuff like that. But do they really need to know my favorite color? Do they really need to know the food I eat most during the week? Do they really need to know the last two places I went on holiday? So we don't give them too much data. If there are data breaches, this is very detrimental to companies. Think of it like this. We all know and trust companies like Microsoft, Apple, Google, right? If either of those companies consistently or constantly gets hacked or their data gets um, leaked onto the internet, they would be fined, number one. And you as an individual, if you find your personal emails being leaked or your images or videos, you would most likely try to sue them as well. So because these companies don't want this negative backlash, they try to ensure that their security is on par with what it needs to be. So the Computer Misuse Act, as I've said many times before, it's in the name, misusing a computer. Now, misusing is normally, well, misusing a computer is normally defined as um, someone gaining unauthorized access to a system. Um, authorized access is where you have permission. Unauthorized access is where you don't have permission and you force your way into that system. Now, this might not be a physical forcing your way into the system, like walking into a building and stealing a computer. It might be using malware over the internet or over a network to try and steal data or to cause damage to some form of data. So the, so the whole point of the Computer Misuse Act is to protect against these attacks, is to protect people's data or just to protect systems in general. So just like before, we have impact on organizations and impact on individuals. Not very different again, but let's quickly cover them. So organizations tend to have, nowadays anyway, really, really good security in place, most of them. Because the repercussions, the problems that they would run into if they don't have those systems in place. Imagine a company like Microsoft, which has billions and billions of um, customers. They get hacked or something happens to their system and there's an investigation into that. 
then it's found out that they actually don't have good enough security for the type of data that they're holding. Now, if they're just holding, I don't know, random pictures of cats and dogs, we really don't care about that, right? However, Microsoft has contracts with hospitals, school businesses. They have people's names, addresses, date of birth, images of surgeries, videos of surgeries, locations, everything. If that gets leaked onto the internet, that could be a really, really negative thing for Microsoft. So companies in general, not just Microsoft, not just Apple, not just Google, but companies in general, they tend to have nowadays really good security to try and combat any threat that could potentially um, come up. Companies also need to create and follow security policies. So again, a company holding sensitive data, only certain people should have access to that data. They have to create security policies to ensure that if this, well, this rule should be followed, but if it is not followed, the people who did not follow the rule are penalized in some way. They could be fired, they could lose their job, they could pay a fine, whatever the case is. And when it gets to individuals now, people nowadays, we've actually gotten pretty good at protecting our data. We, most of us have passwords on all of our devices. Most of us have um, some antivirus. And again, I don't recommend anyone buying any really expensive antivirus on because the Windows Defender one that's built in is really good. Um, the people who actually do the hacking or who try to spread the malware, the people who try to steal the data, they can be fined any amount that is determined sensible by the judge, I guess. And they could also spend up to 10 years in prison. So imagine just sending your friend a virus thinking, thinking it's funny that it's going to shut down their PC every so often, but you get to spend 10 years in prison. And lastly, we're going to look at codes of practice. So here it says a code of practice is a practical guide on how to comply with the legal duties under the work and health and safety. Now, this is not obviously linked to work and health and safety, but just in general, a policy is simply how companies try to follow whatever rules are in place in that country. Code of practice is a professional bodies such as the ICO. They define the codes of practice for certain things. So the main purpose of this is to help to support compliance, uh, ensure data is not mishandled and give individuals confidence that the data they give to a company is actually being held properly. It wouldn't make sense for me to want, uh, let's say, give my details to Virgin when I want my new contract. And then next thing I know, it is all over BBC News. That, oh, this person had a new contract in 2022. Um, look how much they're paying for their internet. And here is their name. We need to be confident that whatever information we give is secure. We need to ensure that data is not mishandled. So it's not simply sold on the black market for whatever price there is. Uh, we need to help support compliance. So we need to help ensure that companies follow the rules. So that's the, those are the purposes of the codes of practice. We need to ensure all of those things.